Hey guys, what's going on? My name is Tuvas, and I'm here today to show you guys how to make this. This is version 2 of... Oh, excuse me. <laughs> this is version 2 of my catapult monster truck. Now, version 1, you can... Wow. You can see demoed in this gameplay footage here. Uh, it is episode 3 of my gameplay series of Besiege, where I demo version 1 of this monster truck. One of the downsides of version 1 is that in order to turn, you'd have to be moving already, and then you can rotate your truck left and right. However, with version 2, you can actually rotate it from where it's standing. Basically, I've added more power to the torque steering ability of this truck, so you can actually aim this car while it's just kind of sitting there. So say I want to aim for those columns there. I go here and then hit 0 and launch the catapult and nearly overshoot it. And I've also upgraded the uh, the distance the catapult can be shot. So uh, yeah, so that's all the benefits of version 2 over version 1. And without further ado, here's the tutorial. Okay guys, so to start off, let's go ahead and start by taking our going to our mechanical section and taking our unpowered wheel and placing one on the back of the core piece and one on the front of the core piece. Next, we're going to take our block section and grab a small wooden block, place that on the back wheel just like that, go to our flight section and take a ballast and place that on the front unpowered wheel just like that, and then go ahead and remove the two unpowered wheels. Now we're going to take our unpowered wheels again and place those on the front of the ballast and then and then on the back of the back piece right here. And we're going to take our small wooden blocks again and place that on the front and back of these unpowered wheels just like this. Then go ahead and remove those unpowered wheels once again. And then next we're going to place two more small wooden blocks underneath these front and back pieces just like this. Then next we're going to place four more unpowered wheels on the sides of the bottommost pieces right here. So one, two, three, four, and then take our small wooden blocks once again and place eat one on each of the small power or unpowered wheels. So just like that. And then go ahead and remove everything except for these four pieces and the original core uh, ballast and back wooden piece. So get rid of the wheels and these small wooden blocks just like this so that all you are left with is this setup. So next we are going to move on to our mechanical section where we start adding the pistons as well as the motor wheels and large powered wheels. So first off go to your mechanical section and select your piston and place four, one each, on each of these leg pieces here. And then once you do that go ahead and place two more on the front pieces so that you have two pistons on the front and one piston on the back. And then go ahead and start bracing everything up. So first off, we're going to want to select our brace from our block section and then go from the back of the core piece to the front of the back piece, just like that. Then go from the top of the core piece, place it on the top of the back piece, then the bottom of the core piece to the bottom of the back piece, just like this. Then next, we're going to want to go to the front of the core piece and it, don't attach this to the ballast. The ballast is going to be free floating away from the core, ple core piece. So instead of going to the ballast, go to actually the bottom most front pistons and go to each of the backs. So start from the, from the front of the core and place them on the back of the bottom most pistons, just like that. And then go ahead and start from the pistons on the back side from their front and connect it to the back of the back piece, just like this. And then what we're going to want to do from here is attach the ballast, the side of the ballast I should say, to the back of the topmost pistons. So just like this, both sides to the backs of each piston. Then go from the front of the ballast and attach that to the side, inner sides of the topmost pistons, just like this. So that when you place it and hit H, that will go up with the topmost pistons and everything else will go up with the bottom set. So the body of the, the truck right there. So next we're going to start adding the wheels that are going to be used for forward and back motions as well as steering left and right. Alright, so we're going to go to our mechanical section and then select our large wheel. But first we can't place it as it is right now because we have to raise the whole assembly. So go ahead and raise it so you have enough room to place this large wheel. And go ahead and place one on each of the small wooden blocks down here. And then for steering, we're going to add our motor wheels to the bottom of the ballast. You're going to put a total of four on the bottom of the ballast, as well as the back small wooden block. Just like that, so you have four on each side. And that is basically the motor wheels used for both forward and back momentum, as well as turning left and right. Because if we were to set the key mapping right now, so let's go ahead and click on one of the large wheels and set forwards to number eight on our keypad. 
and reverse to number five on our keypad. And then go ahead and raise the wheel speed all the way up to two. And then copy that and rather copy that and go ahead and select each wheel and paste. Just like so. You can either click here or press control V, it's up to you. I'm clicking here so that you can see what I'm doing exactly without guessing what I'm doing. Then go to each of, or rather go to one of the motor wheels that are hanging underneath the two pieces here and set forward to number six on the number pad and reverse to number four on the number pad and increase that to max speed as well. Then go ahead and copy and then paste that on each of the motor wheels, just like so. I'm tired of clicking, so I'm just gonna do control V. And then let's go ahead and test this out. So number eight makes it go forward, number five makes it go backwards, then left and then right. Okay, now let's further brace this up so that you don't get this jiggly motion whenever you're moving around. See how it's not very stable? So let's uh, brace up the main body of this, uh, this monster truck. So to do this, we're gonna take our brace from our block section and then go ahead and brace up each of the legs just like this so that you get, you get a total of four braces. And then do the same for the bottom most pistons so that you get another set of four on just the pistons. Now guys, um, when you do this, you're, there's something you're gonna have to keep in mind is that there's actually a little bit of a bug which I demonstrate a little bit in, during my gameplay footage where if you were to drop from a significant height, so even like this much, and the suspension that you use, in this case if we're using pistons as suspension, because they kind of retract into the block they're sitting on. So if I slow this down and then hit play, Keep an eye on this piston, it retracts into that block. Now because it does that, it actually latches onto the brace right here. So if I hit H, see how the brace remains attached to the piston? Now I feel that's a bug and I feel that should not happen. Now it's up to developers if they want to fix that, but a way we can fix this ourselves, see how it does it for each of the braces? Now the way we can fix this ourselves is we can, well first of all hit stop, Highlight each of the wooden blocks and delete them. Hit X, 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 and X. Now undo that same delete. So undo, 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 undo. That kind of resets what the braces are holding onto so that when it does, when the pistons do fall back into the block, they don't actually attach the braces anymore for whatever reason. So now when you hit H, they are free to move and you no longer have the problem with sticky braces. Now I know a lot of people have run into this problem, so this is how you can get around that. Just by deleting the blocks that the sticky braces are attached to and then undoing that, that removal. And anyways guys, so now that we have the truck brace up, let's go ahead and move on to the weaponry section. To add our weapons, let's go ahead and go to our mechanical section, select our pistons once again, and place two on the sides of this core block, and place uh, another two on each of those so that you get a total of four pistons sitting on top of the the side pistons there So just like this so that when you hit H uh, Let's go ahead and bring this back to max speed. It kind of gives you this field goal like look to it the slingshot look Now that's what we're going to use to actually propel the catapult. So next we're going to want to take our hinge and then place it on the back of the back piece just like this and make sure it's not vertical You want to make sure it's horizontal just like this and go ahead and place it then go to our mechanical section and place two more pistons, just like this. And let's go ahead and test this out. So when we hit play and I press H, you kind of get this field goal with a slingshot catapult area right here. So now that we got that together, let's go ahead and add additional support for the actual catapult holding or the bomb holding section. So that when you press uh, H, see how it kind of wants to flop even further down? We're gonna keep that from happening by adding a ballast here. So to do that, we're gonna take our unpowered wheel Place that underneath this first, rather, uh, this first uh, piston here. And then underneath this unpowered wheel, go ahead and place a ballast. So just like this. Then remove that unpowered wheel. And we're going to want to attach this ballast to the pistons here. So that when you press H, so attach it from the back of the ballast to the backs of the pistons. So that when you press H, the ballast will go with the pistons and don't remain stuck to the small wooden blocks there. And then for further support, you can go ahead and brace up the front of the ballast if you really want to. You don't have to do this, but you would attach that to the sides of these back pistons. So just like that. And then I just like doing it because it makes me feel safer with it. And when you hit H, it goes with it again. And there you go. So next, we're going to kind of add the 
the actual rubber bands or uh, springs, so to speak, so that you can actually launch a bomb at your designated targets. To do that, we're going to our mechanical section, take our contractible springs, and then attach that to the back of the topmost pistons of the slingshot, and stretch that over to the side of the backmost piston of the slingshot. So just like this, do it on both sides. And what we're, gonna, what we're going to want to do from here is go ahead and take our key mapper and assign each piston to the number zero on our number pad and set it all the way to max speed and copy and paste that to each of the pistons, including these uh, back ones here. So everything around here. So then next, we're going to also take our contractible springs and set those to zero as well, and then set this to max, which is 10. So that when we hit zero, you get that really sharp slingshot motion. Now, obviously we don't want this to flop forward just like that. So we're gonna make a way for this to stop properly. So to do that, we're gonna to go to our block section and take a small wooden block and place that on top of this back piece like that. So that when you hit zero, it hits it and then the ball just keeps on traveling while the, what's called, while the catapult section will flop back down to where it's supposed to be and not get be in the way of you driving. So then, now, so now that we got the weaponry set up, let's go ahead and work on our hydraulics. And when I say work on our hydraulics, I actually mean just go to your key mapper and select each of these pistons that are sitting on top of the wheels and set them to number three turn on toggle mode and then bring their piston speed all the way down to 0 0.1. Copy that and paste that on each of the pistons. So that when you hit number three, you get this smooth kind of hydraulic system motion. And what this does is the, it pretty much allows you to go off-roading a little bit easier because you extend the pistons so that they're a little bit better in ter uh, better. They're a little bit better in terms of uh, suspensions or as a kind of a suspension system without having to use the actual suspension block. So now that we've got that out of the way, uh, what else do we have to do? Oh, we have to add the actual weapons. So let's go to our weaponry and take our holder, place that on top of the back piston here, and then take our bomb and place that inside of that. If you hit zero, you're gonna launch the bomb pretty far. That's, I feel that's actually pretty reasonable. And especially considering you get like maximum, uh, maximum mobility as long as you get rid of the bomb first, because if you don't get rid of the bomb, all this uh, fish tailing motion will cause the bomb to fall out. If you're driving and you start doing like these insane motions, you'll lose the bomb. That's the downside of having the extra turning capabilities of this truck, is that you risk losing the bomb while you're driving. So the best idea is to get rid of the bomb first, and then when you want, whoops, let's actually keep that from happening. Let's add a brace to that, because I don't like it when it does that. So just add a brace from the back piece and then attach that to the side or the back of the holder. Hopefully that keeps it in place. We do, whoops, there we go. If we do that, yeah, that's good. Okay, so hopefully that'll keep it from falling out. So yeah, so make sure you launch it first and then you can do whatever insane maneuvers you wanna do. If you wanna go with Tokyo Drift, go ahead. Just make sure you do it after you get rid of the bomb. So next, we're going to actually do one more thing and that is the whole reason why I chose this zone. And that is to add the grabber to the ballast. So to, gra to add the grabber, go to your mechanical section, select your steering hinge, place that on the front of the ballast and rotate it so that the arrow is facing down. Take your grabber and place it on in front of that uh, steering hinge. And then take your key mapper and click on the steering hinge and set left to the down arrow, then right to the up arrow. And then go ahead and select your grabber and set that to, I personally like having at number one. So when you drive up to this wood block here, you'll be able to easily grab it. So see how it's kind of high right now? That's why if you, since you set it to the down arrow, you can just press the down arrow and make it go down, then it attaches, then press up and raise it back up. So in order to complete this level, all you have to do is drive over to the glyph over there and then just hover over it. Then hit the down arrow, bring it back down. And if you don't like it not being level, just hit number three to raise your hydraulics and then place it so that's flat. Then hit number one to let go and you're good. There you go, guys. That is basically the truck. So all we're gonna do now is kind of add the aesthetics and that is the wood panels to kind of flesh out the whole truck look. So to do this, we're gonna go to our block section, select our wooden panels and place one on each of the pistons of the slingshot on the sides, just like this. Whoops, 
and make sure you rotate it so that it is facing backwards. Or you can really do whatever you want at this point because the main functionality of the truck is there. But this is what I like doing. Like that, like that. There we go. And I like placing them on the front set of pistons as well. Just like this. Now guys, there's a little bit of bug with the wood panels and it's something that I haven't quite figured out how to uh, correct. And it's pretty much been a matter of luck that they do not, that it does not happen. But basically when you attach the wood panel to a piston and you activate the piston, there's a chance that the wood panel will instead attach itself to the piston that's right above the one it's supposed to be attached to. The last bit I like to add is this metal plate to the front pieces just like that. And I guess we can add it to the back, why not? And uh, let's see if what I'm talking about happens, this bug. So if you hit number three, no, yeah, it works. So, but this kind of shows the bug here. So I attached the wood panels to these pistons, but even though I did that and I hit number three to raise the hydraulics, they instead went up with the top pistons. I have no idea why it does that and I have no idea how to fix that. So if you run into that problem, and sometimes what you get is this one will stay on the bottom piston and this one will go up with the top piston. So you kind of get this, uh, this really unbalanced look and it's just horrible. I, I hate it. <laughs> but if that doesn't happen to you, then great. If it does happen, I am so sorry. I hope you can live with it because I have no idea how to fix that. And sometimes it also happens to these top ones. So if I hit zero, see how those stay at the bottom and then... If I hit three, they'll stay with the top. See how it's non-symmetrical? At least in this case, it doesn't look too bad because that kind of looks like two guns, so to speak, like two like little male firing guns or something. I don't know. Use your imagination. But in this case, it actually worked out because they're both doing the same thing and these two are doing the same thing. But there is still a chance that this will end up here and that will stay where it's at. So it looks really off balance. But uh, anyways, guys, so that's just a warning. And that is how you make the catapult monster truck. I hope you enjoy it. Thank you guys for watching. If you liked this video, go ahead and leave a like. If you really liked it and would like to see more of this kind of stuff, go ahead, go ahead and hit the subscribe button. On the top left is the link to my previous tutorial episode where I show you guys how to make a UFO style bomber that is one, highly maneuverable, it can do barrel rolls in the air, which is really cool, and it's also very precise with its additional maneuvering uh, flying blocks. So go ahead and give that a look if you really want a reliable flying machine. And on the bottom left is my previous gameplay episode where I play through each of, the, each of the zones using this monster truck here, but version 1. And just keep in mind that this tutorial was the better version, which is version 2. So, anyways guys, thank you all for watching once again, and have a nice day!